RMJ Movie Reviews back again with an on-the-fly movie review of Doctor Sleep. I was going to say Doctor Strange, but that's the wrong movie. Wow, guys, uh, the weather change has like got me like all jacked up like all up in here. And I'm trying to get back on point with the movie reviews. So, on to Doctor Sleep. Um, I saw The Shining... I rented it from Blockbusters. Remember that place, guys? On VHS back in... I don't remember. It must have been when I was like in high school. Like a freshman in high school, 97. Maybe it might have been. I might have been middle school, 96. Because The Shining came out, I believe, before I was born. I think The Shining was 1980. I think. I was born in 81. Anyway, either way, I always liked The Shining. Um, I never uh, thought... I was never on the shining train thinking that it was the greatest of all time. That doesn't mean I dismiss it or say it's overrated or anything like that. It just means that I always liked it. And Jack Nicholson is fun. Uh, Shelley Duvall is uh, the great Shelley Duvall fairytale theater on Showtime Network from the 80s. Uh, she is whiny and sniffly and annoying. Uh, I, I quite frankly remember my mother saying that she never could stand The Shining simply because of Shelley Duvall. <laughs> but, um, you know, look, it, it's it's a creepy slow burn of a movie and I liked it. Uh, I never knew there was a sequel written for it uh, by Stephen King. And to digress a little bit, I saw the Steven Weber, Rebecca De Mornay, uh, ABC miniseries version too, which I like that version too. I mean, you know, people dismiss it, but I like it too. You know, um, I never read the book. So anyway, uh, I had no expectations for this sequel. I didn't even realize it was a sequel until like much later on until I read it because I saw the trailers and I was kind of like Red Rum. I was like, huh? I was like, is that The Shining? And then, then I was like, oh, okay, it's a sequel. So anyway, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I had uh, very little expectations for it. Very, very little expectations for it. Um, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um. I think one of the things that I like most about it was in like this sea of like uh, comic book movies and remakes and, and super duper reboots or whatever. I like the fact that this was a sequel to a film that was made basically 40 years ago. But it, it, it really, to me, doesn't feel like like almost like a sequel. Like it, it feels like um, I would say almost like a like a like a second part of a chapter to chapters of a particular idea. That's kind of what it feels like. It feels like an extension of an idea versus actually like a direct sequel or anything like that. And I like that. It it feels um uh it feels like its own movie, but it has a lot of the through line of the original shining with the, the mind reading and and, and, and and the teleporting and all that sort of stuff. And I really, really like that. And uh, he, Ewan McGregor, uh, who I've been hip to since, of course, I first got hip to him in Train Spotting when I was in high school when that movie came out. I've always been a big fan of him. I've always thought he was a great actor. Um, he has a very strong performance here. I like that his character... Um, you know, really starts out as 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 somebody who's uh, really uh, well. He has that darkness, like his father. There's a lot of references to uh, these people who have the shining. They have a darkness in them, and his darkness is like pretty much physically represented in the movie. And I and I love his interpretation of that. Um, there's some things in 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 his particular darkness that uh, ring true to me personally um some things that i've been through and i was just kind of like okay man this is kind of ringing a little ringing a little bit very close for home for me um and i really liked that i liked all the the performers in the movie i thought the little girl i'm excuse you i should have read the actors names before i did the review but the the girl uh, who had the shining she's an excellent child actress she's very good uh the one guy um who's been like in all the kids movies lately. I, I forget the kids names, but, uh, he, he does a brief, uh, 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 child in peril moment on screen, which what I do like is that this movie was not afraid to go there 
and contain a lot of the darkness that Stephen King's early works contains. I like the fact that a lot of these um, uh, uh, genre movies are kind of getting back to the darkness. They're not shying away from it, especially like in this very uh, politically correct, uh, everybody's crying and hurting their feelings type of environment. I like the fact that they were willing to go there. And I will say, the child in peril moments are done in a classy way. So it, it it's enough to make the point to make it uncomfortable and dark and go there. But it doesn't, uh, you know, Michael, Michael Winter, uh, Death Wish 1 and 2 linger on it and kind of uh, be salacious and kind of almost titillate you type of thing. <laughs> it very much, excuse me, y'all, I'm kind of stuffed up here but it, it really um gives you enough to make you feel uncomfortable and, 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 and it does it in a very classy way i kind of felt in watching it that i didn't feel like the the, the actor the child actor was uh might have been scared or anything i love the way it was shot it's it very tastefully done for something that's very uncomfortable and dark <laughs> and uh and i thought the story was very well handled um and um, the actress uh I'm, excuse, excuse me I, I can't remember her name the the actress who plays the master villain in the movie she's hot she's hot like, I mean, she I, I've seen her in other things. I cannot remember her name right offhand, but she did an excellent job. I just was thoroughly pleased with it. Now, um, uh, one of my uh, Sausage Factory cohorts, uh, my boy, Lauren, cool guy. Um, he had kind of mentioned in his review on his channel, which you all should check that out. Um, there's a little bit of fan service in there. And I've heard other movie reviewers, too, had mentioned the aspect of kind of uh, some fan service. Uh, I, 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 I do agree to me, the, the strongest aspects of the movie were when, um, it was kind of doing its own thing when it kind of went into the fan service aspect of it. Ah, uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of took me out of it a little bit, even though it's an extension of that universe. It kind of did take me out of the movie a little bit with that. Um, but you know, all in all, still a good flick. Uh, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I know some of the qualms that, uh, other reviewers have had about it. It didn't really bother me that much because my expectations just pretty much weren't high or low. I was here nor there about it. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. I do think a, a, a legit criticism of the movie is it's too long. It's I, I just thought it was too long. So it was some things in there that could be trimmed because there was in particular, I think there was was there three beats? There was either two or three beats of Ewan McGregor's character that kind of went back to um his addiction problems. And they, they hit that beat I think two or three times. And it was just kind of like, okay, we got it. He he pulled the Rocky and he he overcame the obstacle. But they went back to it two or three times, and I was kind of like, okay, you, you don't have to go back to it two or three times. We get it. That obstacle that he overcame is a really seriously hard obstacle to overcome, and he did it. And they they hit that beat twice. Now, in my personal opinion, the first time they addressed it, I think they should have took that moment out. And there was a second scene with the actor who's replacing Jack Nicholson, which I thought that scene was a little bit too long. But I do like the fact that they held that moment, extended it and the way it ended. I I, I think they should have kept that one in, although it was long and maybe they shouldn't. Have, they maybe should have took it out. I still like that moment. And I, and I thought Hugh McGregor, there was a lot of power uh, in that moment, fan service and a, a good little character art for him there was a lot of power and i really like a lot of the mind teleporting things there's a scene where the master villain is like floating through like space it is freaking phenomenal in the room turns i literally was like oh like, like it was 
<laughs> the room went like this. And I was like, oh my God. Like, I love that stuff. That stuff was so much fun. I, I really enjoyed this flick, man. I'd give it a high rating. I know some some people have been a little bit disappointed by it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, man. I, I'd, I'd give it a, I, I'd give it at least a minimum of eight out of 10. Couple flaws with the length and some some other little things in there could, that could be trimmed, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. So that's my review of Doctor Sleep. Thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video. Don't forget to hit the little bell. Leave comments down below about Doctor Sleep. Hey, whatever however you guys feel, RMJ more reviews. I'll see you soon.